Welcome to Rock Talk Lapidary, your podcast for everything rocks. Coming to you every Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tap that bell. Let's get rocking. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Rock Talk Lapidary, Season 3, Episode 1. Super happy to be back. Um, we welcome you here where at, you know, we talk about rocks, everything lapidary with some of lapid. Whoa, it's going to be a rough night, y'all. Um, some of lapidary's most influential and creative people just like you and me. Um, so this is what we do from beginning to beginner to master. We bring something for everyone. So if you love rocks, you're going to love us. If you don't already, we hope you do. Um, so. We want you to, if you don't mind, hit the bell, hit subscribe, hit the likes, do all that good stuff, share us out, invite your friends, um, because we love you and we want to, you know, be in with uh, your friends, anybody that you know that loves rocks, that even likes them a little bit, please invite them to come and hang out with us. We're here every week, um, Thursday nights at this time. This season, we're just going to do a little short season because we're kind of changing our schedule up a little bit. So this will be a four-week short season. We're not going to do guests this season. It's just going to be us talking about rocks. Um, so tips and tricks, things that we have picked up, things that we've learned, things that we love about rocks. Um, absolutely. Keep commenting. We want to know where you are. We want to know who you are. We want to know what you love about rocks as well. Um, any tips and tricks that you might have for us because, you know, we certainly don't know it all and we want to learn from you too. Um, okay, so we do a giveaway um, every show. So all you got to do to be entered in the giveaway is make a comment. Um, I will at some point scroll through while somebody else is talking and write everybody's name down that's commenting. And at the end of the show, we'll pick a number and someone will win a giveaway. What are we doing for the giveaway today, you might ask. Well, I can tell you, we're going to do this real nice rutilated quartz tab. I did not cut this. It's just something that I have had on my desk. We're going to do this rhodonite heart. I also did not cut that. I think I won that as a giveaway and something, but it's cute. I like it. thought it would be a good giveaway. I have a nice little puffy heart that's a blue tiger's eye. Hopefully you can see that. A lot of shiller to it. It's really cool. Going to get this really nice piece of amethyst, which if I were to lick it, which I'm not going to tonight, you would see that it is a beautiful deep purple. It's a gorgeous piece. And these nice three little quartz points. I'm going to try and not let them fall out here. That I believe Chirsten may have sent me um, as a little freebie in one of the boxes that she sent me. So that's going to be our giveaway tonight, those five items. So if you want to win those, please make a comment. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's all I have for intro stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and bring our co-hosts on, introduce them, and we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, do our thing here. So I'm going to bring Dave on first. Hi, Dave. Well, hey, everybody. How's it going out there? Hey, Courtney, good to see you. You too. You too. Yeah. Missed you guys. I, I was just sitting here uh, fiddling with trying to get the chat going, and it has suddenly come up with the option to connect the actual chat screen I'm in now yeah. to my YouTube account so I can chat right from I wish screen. mine would do that. That's it's awesome. never offered that before. Yeah, so That's I just did cool. that, and now I can answer people. Nice, nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like. That. I like it. So, uh, tell us a little bit about you, Dave. Well, I am Dave. Yay me! Um, 
So um, I do lapidary work. Uh, so I do slabbing, cabbing, the whole nine yards. Um, I also run an online charity for children who have autism. We're on Facebook. We are under the, and if you look at the screen there, I believe it says Rock Tumblers for Autism. And uh, so what we sell, we raise funds and we give good quality rock tumblers to kids who have autism, school age kids. We've given away 30 of them now. Nice. And uh, so nice. that's kind of what I do. I'm a special education teacher as well. Very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring Matt on next. Hi, Matt. Hello. How are you? you guys. It's been crazy. Hey, Matt. Good to see you. Yeah, it's been absolutely crazy. I'm a little exhausted, but I'm present. Right. And we're glad you're present. <laughs> Very Thanks. glad you're present. So tell us a little bit about you, Matt, before we... Yeah, so I collect our... rocks, a lot of them. Um, I also own Redbeard's Rocks, so I do some lapidary. I haven't been able to do a whole lot lately because it's just crazy right now, this time of year for me. Right. Um, I do custom concrete and a bunch of uh, custom remodeling, that sort of thing. So this time of year is a little bit hectic. Uh I really, really need to get back to my wheels, though. My yep, wheels I are hear you. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I miss it. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, it's been a little bit crazy here, too. And, you know, that's the other thing that I forgot uh, was to do my own intro, which when you're done, I will do that real quick. Speaking of yours, how's the rock shop going? It's going well. It's going really well. I had an exciting day today. Um, so I'm Courtney King, CNS Services of uh, Cabs and Stones. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. And in a couple weeks, you can find us in person and live at a rock store here in Parkville, Maryland, where Bill Marcus, who is in our chat, was over with me today, um, helping me do some stuff. So Check this out. I'm going to show you all some pictures. If you don't mind, real quick. So here's me and Bill cheesing it up a little bit just for you guys. So that's Bill, um, our number one commenter every week, and myself. So let's take a little walk through my shop. What do you think? Oh, before we do that, though, Dave, can you tell us a little bit about the merch? Well, and I've just kind of, I was kind of trying to move out of the way so everybody could see what I got and put on my back window. Yes. Right there. So yeah, this, and this is kind of similar to some of our merch that we have. So, you know, we have the stickers, everybody has seen those. And I took the, the, uh, the uh, artwork for the stickers and yeah. I did that. So we have the rock talk lapidary stickers that we sell for $2 a piece, unless you buy 10 or more, and then you can get them for $1.75 a piece. Um, or you can buy a product from one of us, and we'll throw some of those in the envelope or the package, whatever we send you when That's we send right. the uh, the product to you. And uh, I'm guessing that we still have some of the coffee cups left. We still have a few of the mugs left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And if I remember correctly, these were $52.99 per set plus shipping. Yep. Um, it's been if a while you want since I. Both. Yeah. If, they if want you want both. both, right. They were 20, or 28 bucks a piece. $27.95. $27.95. Just one of them. Yep. And uh, so uh, we've got some of these still available. Make sure and get your sticker. Um, if you want them, just get a hold of Courtney. There should be a link at the bottom of your screen to co tell Courtney that you want the coffee cups. And you can get these stickers from any one of us. Yep. Yep. So you can email us. All of our emails are below in the description. We all have stickers. It is important to remember that, yes, that the stickers from the previous seasons are now synced per se, right? Because we do have a new logo, which is right there above Dave's head. I couldn't figure out how to put the picture in where I could show everybody the full. Oh, maybe it's this one. There, there it is. There we go. That's so what's that's on the our, poster. That's our new logo. Um, and that is what is on the poster that Dave has. So I have lips now. Yay for lips. Um, and Brad is now on the logo. And Andrew. So, Andrew, and too. Andrew. Yep, I think yep. Andrew was on the last one. Um, but it? anyway, so it's cooler. There's more people on it. So it's updated. 
so future stickers will look different than the last. Right. Uh, oh, yeah, when these would. stickers are gone, there will be no more ever. And so when I when I saw stickers. the new design, I called her and Cheerster, and I called them Hot Lips Courtney and Kissy KS. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's walk through my shop real quick, and then we'll uh, we'll move on to some other things. Um, Ryan is running late. He may or may not make it. He is at one of his kids' uh, sports games. I don't know where Brad is. He may be at a show. Um, and Tristan's just taking a break. So uh, she's in the comments. So she's here in spirit, and she's here in words, just not on camera tonight. So as you walk into the store, this is what you're going to see. This is my little checkout area. I love this that's, already. That's my little sitting area with my magazines, with my, my good friend, Bill Marcus, looking at a magazine. All my Rock and Gem magazines are there. My jewelry area is at the front for the most part. This is a baker's rack that I'm hanging stuff on. The stuff that you see hung so far is all Cheerston stuff. So she's already sent me some of her stuff to sell, which is great. I've got baskets of tumbles all in place. So those are these really cool little, they're, they're rock tables to go on your table. <laughs> I love them. I think they're so cool. Rock tables for your table. Rock tables for your table. And then, you know, carvings, um, that kind of stuff, carvings, towers. This section is my Josh Jr. section. He sent me a whole bunch of really cool obsidian, um, some Montana agates, um, just all kinds of stuff. So I've got some of his cabs. I've got some of his tumbles. I've got all kinds of stuff um, of his to sell. Um, and then we're just walking through the shop, right? So more towers, angels, specimens. We've got a whole bunch of specimens coming. Uh, more jewelry. So this is coming back up to the front again. That's my office with my really cool refrigerator that my husband got me for my birthday. And this is the classroom. So everything is shaping up. Um, and that's, you know, Bill catching me working. Um, so that's the shop, right? So it's, it's shaping up. I did move nice. the, uh, I moved the Very open nice. date back a week. Um, because I still have so much inventory coming and I still have to build everything in the computer. I've got it all tagged and checked in and on a list, but I still have to actually build it all in the computer. So rather than make myself crazy over the next week and a half, I decided I'm just going to push the open date back a week. So that's what I've been doing um, almost nonstop because I'm a nut job. Um I'm trying to get some cabs cut. Um, I owe Kelly a cab. Um, I owe a bunch of people cabs. So I need to get back to cutting. And I will. Um, I'm not going to the store tomorrow. I'm going to cut tomorrow. Um, because I need to cut. My, my, my whole attitude is a little bit different if I don't have time to sit down and cut. You know what I mean? It's... Yeah, cutting stones is my peace, right? It's my meditation. It's my whatever you want to call it, but I need to do it. So tomorrow, that's all I'm doing. I'm cutting rocks. So. Yep, I completely understand. Right, right. So Matt's been playing with concrete. I've been playing with store. What have you been playing with, Dave? Um, you know, I've been playing with several different things. I went playing uh, with Jaws Jr. up at uh, Glass Buttes and played with Obsidian. And I mean a lot of it. And I think that was just after we ended our last season that I went and did that. So I've been slabbing some of that up, um, trying to get it ready to cab. And so we'll, we'll talk about some of that uh, when we get ready here. Um, some, uh, things that I learned from Jaws, some things I learned on my own while I was up there about going up and getting ready for it. Matter of fact, I was so excited. I just found uh, 20 acres, not far from there that my wife and I are thinking about buying nice. just to have a place so we can go do whatever we want. Nobody can bother us and, and be close to glass buttes whenever we want to. There you go. Yeah. There you yeah. go. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. We've, Very cool. 
Okay, so before we start talking about more tips and tricks, um, since we don't have Brad here, I'm going to go ahead and do the viewer spotlight for this week. Um, the viewer spotlight this week isn't as much of a surprise now as it was going to be because they're not here. So as most of us know, and maybe not the viewers so much, Tammy probably knows and probably Sharon, but... Um, Andrew and Ryan have started cutting cabs and drilling holes and making little necklaces. So we thought it would be really cool to make them our viewer spotlight this week. So that's Andrew. I don't have a picture of Ryan, but we all know what Ryan looks like. But just to show you kind of what they're doing, um, some really cool stuff. They were trying to get into something a little bit different. Um... I thought this was super cool that Ryan had made. So this is what they're doing currently. In addition to their normal slabs and rough and, you know, that kind of thing. This is the one that Andrew said he didn't want to cut. I love this one. I think that one is phenomenal. This is one they're working on right now that hopefully is in I my like order. That one. Because I yep. ordered some of their stuff uh, for my store as well. So hopefully those will, um, that particular one will end up in my store. <laughs> and if I like it enough, it might end up on my neck. I, I was going to say, that's going to end up stashed in your drawer yeah, somewhere. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. funny when Bill and I were working today at the store, you know, we were talking about how it's difficult for me, all of this, because I don't want to sell any of it. Mm -hmm. I want to keep it all, but right. I can't, you know what I mean? I just can't. So, um, so I did pretty good today and not stealing anything, um, <laughs> <laughs> or choosing to keep it for myself. You know, it would, I would buy it if I did, but, uh, but so that part of it is difficult because I do want to keep it all. You know what I mean? But, uh, well, and, and I can sell my stuff. It just, nobody wants to buy it at the price that I'll agree to sell it for. <laughs> 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 do you ever price things in such a way that no one will ever buy it because I you do. don't want to let it go? I do. I've, I've done, done it that more a than couple once. of times. Yeah, yeah, I've done it once or twice, and I ended up selling them anyway. So I guess. Well, I once in a while, you get that surprise person that comes in and says, "I don't care how much it is. I That's want it." That's right. That's yeah. right. And then you have to sell it, and it's kind of yeah. sad and wonderful all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I, matter of okay. fact, I sold a white dinosaur bone pop socket that way. Oh, nice. Yeah. I just wow, I should have never I let that it go. Was pretty. Yeah. I it that was. was and they paid a good price for it because it was something I thought, no, this is bone I always want to keep. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Right. 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 That's the one thing that I would love to have um, in my store is some of your, your rock sockets. I think. And I plan on getting I you a bunch of them. They there. would yep. sell wonderfully right. and i know you have we're on vacation and you've been like crazy so I'm just, it's just a friendly reminder dave i was thinking of it when you started showing your shop I thought, yep hey the <laughs> thing is i i want my stuff placed very discreetly up in front of josh jr <laughs> i can do that <laughs> i can give you that little section very right, discreetly. Right, right where he is going into where he is there you um, go <laughs> or i was actually thinking of putting you more um across from him so him on this side and you on this side with so it's the jewelry and then there's a spot right there i was thinking that would be a great spot for you well, I don't really worry about it too much. You know how to put up your shop, but I do like to give Jaws a good razzin. Right? He's just said, I see how you are, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay, so let's talk tips and tricks of lapidary. Dave, you recently cleaned your saw. I did. And, you know, I, I really had to think about the way I went through it because, honestly, uh, th that's a job that I don't like. Oh, and, really? I uh, love it. You know, it, it, it takes time away from ha from being able to slab and and, uh, you know, and then I'm I'm not the cleanest person. So then I've got oil and gunk all over me. I had let the saw go way too far before right. I went and cleaned it. And uh, and I actually took it down. I would have still been using it, except I lost a bearing 
And uh, so I had to drain it and clean it anyway and order a set of bearings for it, which HP said, nope, that bearing should not have gone bad. I want everybody to know Highland Park treated me well over that bearing. And that nice. saw is almost two years old. And oh, wow. they, 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 they sent me a new bearing that I'm That's getting That's awesome. For That's and great. so they treated me well that way. But I'll tell you what I did. So um, I, their, their drain system is like most saws on the market now. They have the, the three-inch pipe in the bottom or two-and-a-half-inch uh -huh. uh, in the bottom. You pull the cap off it. And I just drain it into buckets. And then I have uh, – I have a little squeegee type uh, plastic putty knife, I guess it is about that wide. Yep. And I just get up in there and I scrape it all forward. And But it had caked on my vice and caked on the rails. It was caked on everything because it sat over the winter and I'd be, just been using it, you know, a lot. And so I thought, how am I going to get all of this loose? And you come over and, you know, you get your little, your simple green stuff and you're squirting it. It'd, it'd take 90 years to get it loose with simple green. And so I thought, no, I'm not doing this. And it has casters on it. So I rolled it right out to the end of the deck. And I looked at uh, a Highland Park. I went to the, what, here's what, here's what made me make the decision for what I did. I went to Highland Park's website and I found a video where they were talking about when you need to run water in that saw uh -huh. to put water in it, how to clean it up afterward and how to keep from getting rushed. Well, right. that was a green light for me. I grabbed my new power sprayer that I had sitting out there and I went to town because I'm telling you, it, it. it was bad. So now one of the tricks, if you don't want a giant mess, don't get in there and get two sp stuff going everywhere. And uh, hey, Ryan, um, What's up? you know, the price of tea, <laughs> right? Dave's telling us about <laughs> his saw cleaning expedition. Yeah. Oh. Um, he power washed it. Power washed it. <laughs> I love I it. I did. And an what HP, is it? you can do that with an HP saw, actually. Mm -hmm. They are set up so you can run water in them as long as you clean it up. So I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And one of the things that I that I learned, take an empty five-gallon bucket, put under that drain spout. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, drain everything Absolutely. you spray out of that, all of that stuff, even though you're power spraying, drain all of that. And I, I put four befores under the back of the saw. So I raised it up a little bit, oh, spray no. all of that out, let that run down into the front so it all runs down that bucket. You don't have a giant mess except for right. what splashes back on your bald head, right? <laughs> and uh, so I'm out there in the hot sun and I'm spraying away. And I thought, man, this, th nothing but pure water, this just cleaned fantastically. Nice. Well, I didn't know that my wife had used the power sprayer the day before, and she took all of my uh, car stuff um, <laughs> that makes your car beat up, and she had poured into the soap dispenser. Oh, no. And you know something? It was beautiful. All of the water beat it up and ran right off of everything. That's <laughs> It was phenomenal. That's great. On your Highland and Park, do you still have the regular drain plug on there? Did you yes. guys both? Yeah, I you? haven't put a valve I on do. it yet. I, I put a valve on mine, dude. I really? Put it so easy. You just go bloop. It all just empties it, out. It just all drains out, yep. right? And I've got to get that done. I just haven't See, done it See, my yet. problem is I wait so long to clean it that it doesn't all, it's mud. Like, it does not drain <laughs> out. <It's, laughs> well, that's the way mine it's was. It's an event. You, you it's an event it to the cleaning floor, my right? Oh, hold on. <laughs> At that point, if you add water just to break up the mud itself, yeah. You could still just drain yeah. it out the bottom. You just need to add like a pitcher of water to it and agitate it. Yeah. Right. Uh, that makes now, sense. Yeah, I'll tell you something sense. that I did do, and I actually turned that saw on with the blade still in it so there would be something there to churn it up. I turned that saw on, and I let it run for about 15 minutes. And it warms okay. that oil up just a little bit and all that gook. And so it's a lot yes. more liquid than what it okay. would be otherwise. Oh, and I so, think about, see, tips and tricks, you guys. Yeah. I got to yeah, write so that one down. I did that. And then, you know, having that, that, uh, that, sh that wash in there actually really helped because all the water beat it up anyway. And then I took, I was going to try and clean it with paper towels and, and the paper towels just weren't doing it. And I thought, well, It'd be nice if I could just blow all of this water out of here. So Dude, lo and behold, are you ready for this? <laughs> I walked out in my garage and I looked down there and there is my steel leaf blower, my gas powered leaf blower. And I fired that puppy up. <laughs> and I did. I went out there and I blew all the water back out of that saw right down into the front so I could lap up the last of it. I love um, it. 
and one of the things that Highland Park was really, you know, uh, serious about said, make sure that you protect that with something after you've had water in it. And so I went out there with it still leaning forward, the whole inside, especially down around anything that was metal, all of my vice, everything. I used a whole can of WD-40 and made sure that you get it down there with the nozzle so you can spray in there. If there's any water left in behind anything, that right. it'll push that water all out of there. Okay. And so by the time I got through, I had a nice, bright, shiny saw inside. And uh, I was no longer bright and shiny. I had to go clean up. <laughs> Wife wouldn't right, have anything right. to do with me. Um, I was the I was the mineral oil monster when I got in the house. But my saw looks nice. There you go. There you go. Nice. And Ryan, you have a, a an Everclean on yours, right? I do. Yep. So you still have to clean it sometimes, or is it just? So the only time I've ever had to clean it with my Everclean, I didn't watch. I mean, I watched a bunch of videos on the Everclean. Yeah. There was a quick fix video that I did not watch that John made about taking the very bottom of the pump off because there's a chance of getting little rocks stuck in there because my pump quit one time and it was a dead of winter and I didn't want to have to ship it back because I figured we could fix it. But I think we went two weeks without the Everclean and then we had to change the actual. Okay. We right. cut okay. so much we had to change it, change yeah. it. So. Right, right. Um, but and, other than that. It was great. Yeah. I just took the bottom off, grabbed that little rock out, and Andrew or Andrew it worked did. fine. And then it just restarted, straight up. No Ooh. kidding! Wow. Yep. So you that's that good to know. Awesome. Nice. I bet you can't guess what I just ordered from Highland Park. An Everclean. An Everclean. An Everclean. Good for I you, did. Man. So that's that's good to it's know. A good investment. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I ordered one for mine, but I don't have the one that's freestanding. I have the tabletop version, and you can't put it on those. I remember table that. Top so, version. Yeah, I, they have a 14 inch table. Yep, with no uh, legs on it. No, the top version of the, the song. Okay. Yeah. Right. And right. I, you can't put an Everclean on it because it, it won't handle the vibration. It'll vibrate it right off the table. There right. is another way so, you can do that, though. You can buy the, it's, I don't know how much it is, tank. but they have a tub, the tank, yeah. that yeah. the Everclean sits in the tank and it will pump it in and out of the saw for you. Right. You don't have to attach it right. to the saw. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, I investigated that and I decided that um, if I was going to spend that much money, I would just buy another saw. <laughs> and I think you and I talked about that. Yeah. Once before. Yeah. 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 Um, um, so, you know, that's um, made for people who have, have multiple saws, saw, but you know. yeah, uh, you can run multiple saws, have the tank only have one ever clean and run multiple right. saws off that one ever clean that way. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I would like to at some point get another one, but you know. Like well, you're now the owner like of I a have rock time shop. You're for poor. That. Right, exactly. Yeah. And now I did, you know, I do have another cab <laughs> machine at the rock shop. So if I don't have customers, I can cut while I'm there. Um, but yeah, getting another saw probably isn't in my future anytime soon, and that's okay. But, I got a 14 inch, I'll show you. Shut up, Dave. <laughs> Is it a clean one? It's a clean, you know, it is a clean, clean one. 14 inch, huh? okay, it is a it, it is a 73 year old 14 oh inch that looks like it's 10, 15 years old. I mean, the guy really took great care of it. It was my first slab saw. Nice. And uh, it, it was I'm one never of the afraid of old stuff. Ever. It was the very first yeah, the one of a saw. The they called it a ducket. D U K E T T. Mm -hmm. It was built in uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon. He built that for himself in 1950, and then they went on to build them later on. And it has a series of pipes and valves on the front of it. You yeah. hook a water hose to it, turn the water hose on, and that runs your feed. And you can dial it right down to a bare minimum three pounds and, and just no get kidding. beautiful cuts out of it. Yeah, I'd never wow. seen anything like that. Interesting. Crazy. Interesting. Isn't it? The, the things yeah. that people do and invent. Oh, I love right. old lapidary machines, dude. I, I, there's a video on YouTube where a guy is walking through an old lapidary museum. That's a cool watch if you guys haven't watched that. Okay. There's a lot of interesting machines in there that I was like, wow. Right. All, well, you can see this thing right here. This, What's... this flat lap right here is a piece of a Griffin that's 40 or 45 years old. Wow. My other cabbing machine is 35 or 40 years old, a single wheeled cab mate. Our, our they make great equipment. Our first slab saw ever yeah, was yeah. a like 40 something year old Raytec 18-inch. Yeah. This is a good saw. Right. This is a good saw. So Rock and Wheelers equipment. has an interesting question. 
there are many diamond chain rope designed for rocks. You know, like they use for cutting the big jade boulders. The smallest one that I've seen is a two foot diameter. That's still That's you have so to weigh it down. One. You have you to can get a smaller it. one. Um, the best thing to do is get what they call a soil pipe cutter. Oh, I see those. I know what you're talking about. Soil pipe cutter. It's a, and what it is is for it, they, they use it to cut concrete pipe and stuff when they're setting um, sewer drains. Okay. And it just has a series of teeth around the inside of it. And you use it just like the big one and, and you just get pressure on it and you just tighten that down. And it will go all the way around that as you put pressure on it those cut in and it will crack that right in half where you where you where you're at okay. i never thought about and it's just so called a soil pipe cutter is that the same type of thing that they use you know you go to some of these shows and there's always somebody that has a booth that's cutting geodes open for cutting people. geodes open exactly is it the same yes. type of a thing yeah. okay that's just it's, okay. And, and that's what they're using they use a soil pipe cutter to do that interesting yeah i didn't know that's what it was called i thought it was a geode cutter yeah it is <laughs> It's also for uh, cutting cast iron pipe, old cast iron pipe. That's okay. right. It will cut cast okay. iron, won't it? That's right. I forgot. Yeah. Yep. It'll snap it right off. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I don't. I don't think she's talking about cutting geodes, though. I mean, she may be, but or rock and wheelers may be, but it says a diamond rope. Yeah, exactly. Like they use for cutting jade. Have you never yeah. seen like uh, the BC Jade that's on TV, Jade Hunters or whatever it is? And they use it's a generator with a wheel I on know it, what and they use about. a huge. Yeah, it's literally just uh, um, like a titanium rope, like braided rope right. that has yeah, diamond all in it, and it just now. runs. And they put water on it. Yep. Okay. It's like a, yeah. It's like yeah. A I, I know what she's it's talking like about. It's like a now. really huge bandsaw. It is. It, it really and they is. do make smaller ones. I use a diamond chainsaw to cut concrete all the time. Um, but I, I don't, I've never heard of a diamond rope for cutting, you know, a small one. Now I'll I've, send you a video after this, Matt, when we're done, I'll send you a video. No, I've seen the big ones. She's, oh, okay. She's asking about a small one. She, yeah. Yeah, a small one. And I don't know who makes the small ones. Um, there is someone, there's a company, I don't think Highland Park makes the the uh, intermediate one, but there was someone I saw that made one that was only like a four or five foot, and they're, they're, a, they're a wire diamond saw is what they are. Okay. Um, okay. I'll have to ask a guy here. Yeah, I mean, I guess it. it would depend on, you know, what are you trying to cut, too? I mean, because you could always right. get, you know, a bandsaw. Um, too, that you know, they make all different sizes of bandsaws. And the I have a little one, like little one, that I use, but I only use it for soft materials because to try and cut through a piece of jasper or something like that is be there forever. The you could always yeah. get yeah. a hose and a, a diamond disc for like a, a grinder. Yeah. And go around and score the whole thing and just take a chisel and a hammer and go around. It'll, it'll Absolutely. break. Absolutely. I promise you. It'll yeah. break. Right. Right. So right. We well, kind of like what Matt like uses. You can, you can get something with those small diamond uh, concrete blades. They make smaller blades for some of the concrete. I you use, can use uh, that and score. Different. I've got any, any of those from that look like a, a die grinder clear up to a handheld, you know, Okay. Steel cutoff saw that's got a twenty inch yeah. blade, right? So they right. they make them anywhere in between. But you're you're absolutely right. If you if you grind around it, uh, and and you kind of take your time to mark around it so that it's cut, right. you know, aesthetically, and it's not all chopped up. But if you grind around it and you smack it a couple times with a good hard cold chisel, it'll it'll pop. Okay. Yep. So Tammy asked if it's kind of like a cast iron pipe cutter. Yes. I guess that's what you were talking about earlier, Matt, right? Okay. It is. Thank you. Cherson yeah. says he has one for a hacksaw. Yes. Right. They, they, there's diamond blades like for a hacksaw. Diamond hacksaws. blade for a hacksaw. Yeah. Okay. There's diamond blades for sawzalls. Um, right. Found some jade here in Washington. How um how big of a piece of jade, if you don't mind me asking? If that's what they're trying to cut, how big is the piece of jade? I could, I'll figure this out right now. I have hope you right. Yes, I, 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 I just want a smooth cut. 
Okay. You need help cutting something. A Sounds like cut. I could help. Right, right. Yeah, get a hold of Ryan, Rock'em Wheelers. Um, in the description of the show, you'll find his email. Um, or you can hit him up on Facebook at Glacier Bros. Yep. That's easy. Um, he'll be more than happy to help you out. More than happy to help you out. Well, and Jaws Jr. up there, he said also, and, and he's right, they have something called a drag saw. Uh, I know a guy right here in the valley that make, uh, that made his own. And you can put anywhere from a, a, a two-foot to an eight-foot or bigger blade on that. And not all it is wow. is just a it, – it just it does one of these numbers and swings back and forth, and it cuts through the rocket. They're, they're fairly slow, but you, right. could, you can actually find those online or find the design how to build your own drag saw if you have the yep. skill to do it. So that might be an option to think about. Yeah, I guess yeah, it depends that's really on interesting. how I'm big sorry, of a piece ahead. of rock they're trying to cut, right? Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. That's just, why I asked how big yeah. it was because we like could solve Jeff this really quick. Too, you know, wet tile saws work as well. Um, if it's something small, if it's something three inches or less, you know, so it really does all depend on what it is you're trying to, how big. Well, the, and hold on, the if they're, if they're in Washington, there's no way that somewhere close to them, there's not a local lapidary place, like right. a lapidary club, you know right. what I mean? And that right. will right. definitely help you. No, they're just like us, too. they live for that stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, and again, depending on the size of the of the rock that you want to cut. So our 50 plus center here, I can go up and uh, I think it's like a dollar fifty an hour to cut. They have 36 uh, inch and bigger saws up at our our, yeah. uh, right. our lapidary shop here. So right. you can go in and and use the space and cut things. So it's another option. Absolutely. Can it Kingsley right. Kingsley to an hour? Kingsley will let you come in and use their saws. Yeah. That's a, cool. yeah. a lot of big places where you don't get to use their saws. You bring the rock and you show them how you want it cut, and they cut right. it for you and give you back slabs. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's the okay. same thing they charge by the hour, and you don't have to do anything except for pick your stuff up. Right. Well, and that's, Josh that's, Jr. just – That's the way our lapidary club is here. It used to be you could use their saws, but then they got all new saws, and now they're all – They want to do it themselves. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it ourselves. But yeah, Jaws, Jaws yeah. Jr. just yeah. said Northwest Rockhounds Shop in Seattle um, is a really good resource. So you might want right. to check them out, Rock and Wheelers. And between now, Oregon and Washington, that's like that's a lot of the rock hunting capital of the, the northern United States. There's a lot there. Right. Right. Lot. Yeah, there's got to be somebody. Um, and if not, if you can't find anybody, like we said, you know, hit up Ryan. He'll be more than happy to help you out. Oh, yeah. Well, and just so everybody knows, when those when those places say no, you bring it and we'll cut it. We won't let you use the rocks. They're not being jerks. You're talking no. about a 36 inch saw being eleven, twelve thousand dollars. Right, and, and the they blade don't know is what super your expensive. Level yeah. yeah, if you don't yeah. get that seated in the vise just the right way, that rock can come loose, and you're out of five hundred to a thousand dollars blade when right. that yep. happens on a bigger right. saw like right. that. So yeah. that's that's really the thing right there. They're, they're protecting their investment because not everybody knows how to put one in the vise and get it seated. Shoot, right. my 20-inch blades are $200. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yep. 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 you get what you pay for in the lapidary industry. You buy a cheap blade, it's going to last a couple weeks. You buy an expensive one, it's going to last until you stop putting leaflets in it. Right. That, right. That's how mine works. Right. right. So oh. rock and wheelers, you know, they, there's no lapidary in their area. Um, they're too far away. So they're they're a disabled couple um, with a special needs child. So um. for them, it, it's difficult, right? Um, well, if it's small, small enough, I would look up Harbor Freight. Mm -hmm. They have a tile saw. Yeah. It is not expensive. I know so many people that started with that Harbor Freight tile saw. I, I know, like I crazy still, good artists. I yeah. still use a tile saw. That, that still use for, a tile for cutting saw. my preforms. I still I've got, use. A tile I've saw. got two tile saws. I've got a seven inch and a ten inch that I use to cut. There you go. Yep, yep. They work just fine. I've got you a lot. You, just have, I did you just have to be careful. You know, you just have to be careful with them. That's all, and be patient. Don't try I didn't to have to mass through. cut agates. Like get in ten pounds of agates and face them all. That's right. what we do. You know what I mean? I was yeah. I sit there on that trim saw and I face all of them. I would use a tile saw, but I just we push out too much. I'd end up wearing it out. I really would. Okay, so they just got a high tech six inch dual blade for the smaller rocks and jade. So yeah, ten in, ten inch. Sharon said, you know, get a ten inch if you can, if you can afford it. Um, and, and I tell you what, you need to hit better. me up. 
better if I have to, you send it to me and I'll cut it in half for you and ship it back. I right. Just, I was kind of thinking the same me. thing. Well, just depending. And us. I don't. Did we see where they said what size rocket was? No, I, they still haven't said. I've been they waiting. Still haven't said. Yeah. yeah rock, rock and wheelers. What, what? How big of a of a piece of material are we talking? Oh, rebellious chaos is here. Yep, <laughs> there she you. is. Hello. Oh, I just, Tammy, hello, Tammy. Yeah, Tammy's been here the whole time. Tammy, Sharon, I'm just giving some shout outs. Man, I missed everybody. Right. I'm sorry I was late. But That's I'm here okay. now. We're glad Life you happens. showed up. Did you? You didn't. My boy, my boy had a soccer game, and I'm not saw, missing that. We made yeah. you and Andrew the viewer spotlight. What? Yeah, you missed it. We and who's going to be embarrassed, too? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been doing such great stuff that we, Brad and I talked about it, and we decided we wanted to. Oh, oh thanks, guys. guys. We've just been we been working. Our, our viewer spotlight. So, yeah, so I, I showed we found something we pictures like. of, of stuff that <laughs> you guys have been doing, and I'm super excited to get my order so I can. Uh, Look, Andrew's in here. He said, oh, no. I, he said, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You were it yeah. today, buddy. And there's one of the pictures is you actually with one of them that you're wearing and showing off. So we uh, yeah, we're you, you'll have to go in and do the replay and, and check it out. So. We're 16 out of 20 and on your stuff right now, Court. We've been nice. busting them out. Yeah, we're almost done. Very nice. We're almost done. So I have a question. Uh, hold on. I got to show this picture. Let me find it again. Here it is. Please tell me that's going to be one of mine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. That one may not get. Sold. I I made you an awesome fluorite cap. It's like this big. Nice, nice. That's All kinds great. of stuff. They are right, Tammy. We love you too, Andrew, very very much. Oh, that was so cool. Tammy came and visited us. That's what you were saying. And her her son got to play on my CB8, and he nice. made his nice. own necklace. He polished nice. his own piece of banded calcite. Oh, and then cool. I, I drilled a hole in it for him and wrapped it. That's so great. cool. Yeah, That's it was great. fun to watch. It was nice. Fun to watch. nice, 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 nice. Now, how far away from you does Tammy live? Is it from Missouri? Cool rock and like a while. Oh my gosh. You know, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's farther than yeah. I am. Mm. Wow. That's cool, Tammy. That's really cool. We had a, we had a lot of fun. Next time, we're going to spend more time hunting. So Rock and Wheeler just answered said 30 pounds and larger. A friend is going to send some jade rocks and boulders. Um, oh my gosh. What, what I would do, my advice would be if you have the skill in or anybody can help you, drag saws are not super hard to build. Um, the blades are not real expensive for the things. I would be looking at building a drag saw. Okay. Okay. Or cut it down, right? I mean, a cheaper cheap way to get by would be to like we talked about earlier cut it down with a cut with it a down right chisel grinder it. with a diamond wheel on right. it break it with a chisel so that it's in more manageable pieces but yeah 30 pound that's that's a that's size that, that's a yeah. yeah you that's know what Jules jr i will make a video i'll have andrew help me make a video of our drilling process before next week's show so that way we could put it up just a quick yeah. video yeah it's so not hard what, what do you guys have one of the um First of all, do you use a drill press? Yeah, but ours is okay. ours is kind of cool. It's it's we have the Dremel forty three hundred. I'm a big okay. fan of the. Yeah. And then we got the the flex shaft, but yeah. then we got the workstation with the drill yes, press on. Yes, that's it. how I do mine. Yeah. And then um, Super but cool, using right? using circular tips, circular yeah. tips. Yeah. That's how we drill. Yeah. We use we use circular about halfway through, and then we go to the normal drills, the flathead drills. And okay. then we drill through the rest and then flip it over and then put the round head back on and go back through the other side so they're nice and smooth. Really? Nice. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. It works good. It really does. Yeah, and I'll then, be of course, in water. that next week. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That'd be cool. fun. Uh, we'll, get, cool. we'll get it done for sure. Nice. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. So what else has been going on, you guys? Working. Working Anybody sports. Wanna... Kid sports. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and, been, and if I remember right. working right. himself to death. Yeah. It, He's playing with rocks, say. but it's not the right kind. He's playing with yeah. concrete. You know what? I saw <laughs> I saw some of Senior Matt's welding. 
And I was impressed. The welding, welding was good, dude. How did yep. I miss the welding? Part? I saw it, Matt. It was yeah, he nice. Po he posted some beads that he did. That bead was okay. good. Okay. Yeah, that was okay. a nice bead. I missed yeah. that post. I'll have yeah, to go back and look. Yeah. There was a lot of welding in that project. A whole lot. Okay. Yeah, lots well, of the practice. The stuff you posted looked really nice, man. It did. Yeah, I, w I welded for a long time. So, yeah. like I said, it's kind of like riding a bicycle, you know. But, <laughs> but yeah, if somebody knows what they're looking at, it, it was a good weld. It yeah. Was. Nice. Well, nice. now they always say that, Matt. They always say it's like riding a bicycle. You never forget. But I hadn't been on a bicycle for 20 years. And when I got <laughs> on, I had a skinned knee. Yes. You should, you should <laughs> not start on a bicycle yes. now, Dave. Right? <laughs> Forget, yeah, forgetting how and being able to are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know something? It, it, I, I have talked to people who have quit lapidary, quit cabbing for like, you know, five years, 10 years. And where they still have the basic skills, when they come back, they have to learn a lot of it all over again. Yes. So just like everything else, cabbing is something that it does take keeping in practice if you want to be good at it and stay good at it. Yeah, yeah. It's because there's a lot of muscle memory involved. There's right, a lot exactly. Of, you know, getting the dome smooth, you know, getting the flat spots out. It's all, it's all um, repetition, right? like anything else the more you do yeah. it the better you get right oh or, my right. lord i hope. have learned so much in the last month our domes yeah. the first week were terrible and yeah. you know i i used to make like 10 pairs of plugs a day so my right. my domes were on point and then i didn't cab for a year right and now here we are and i felt like a brand new person trying to learn to cab. <laughs> 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 right. i tell you what the stuff we've been making is it's good though Nice. It really is. Nice. Yeah, I'm well, excited. And you know, Ryan, I'm excited to I, see it. I started this four years ago, and I had never capped before. And even now, even though I, I have pretty nice domes, I, I find my technique constantly. I'm, I'm changing my technique a little bit still, trying yeah. to refine some of that. Um, right. Find what really works, because one time I'll sit down and it's like, okay, but all of a sudden something feels a little different. And I'll make an adjustment, and I think, oh, well, this really works better than what it was before. Right. So before right. I, you have to high dome on plugs, or I think they yeah. look weird. I don't like yeah. the way that they look if you don't high dome them. Right. Um, but on the caps we've been doing, so I'm doing a quarter inch thick, um, little slabs before I cut everything out, mm -hmm. and then I'm taking a pencil and laying it flat and running it around for the girdle line, and for it's about girdle. halfway down. Yeah. Uh, putting the face flat against the wheel like this vertically against the wheel mm -hmm. and then um running my edges but before what i was doing is i was just doing a side so saying that like uh you're doing a heart i would go to the corner and stop and then go and do the other corner but the way that i just learned to do this mid doming you go around the whole thing the whole outside like mm -hmm. a circle every edge so there's there's no pointing and then it domes but it's more like girdle and then perfectly like a a, a pop socket, mm -hmm. Dave. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're pulling that. You're pulling that in one yeah. strand at a time, and you go I back around. I never had capped like yeah. that ever. Yeah. And in the la in the last month, we went from not knowing how to doing it to doing it pretty good. So. No, your material looks good. I, I I've I've enjoyed what you've posted. It looks really yeah. good. I think we're we're yeah. over 120 cabs in the last. Oh wow. Couple wow. weeks. So. Nice. Well, yeah. so you guys that. You're cabbing for a living, really. You're slabbing, you're cabbing, you're doing all yeah. this is how you're making your living. Yeah, lapidary. <laughs> I worry that if, because I started making these pop sockets almost four years ago now. And I got so sick of cabbing because the only way we were supporting this charity is just making pop sockets. And I worry that if I had to make a living out of it, that I might not enjoy cabbing anymore. Do you have any problems like that? Either any No, of because I... I learned something from my buddy, Mark S. Anderson. If I ever get to a point where it's like that, I will choose who I want to sell my stuff to. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not right. going to be like, right. oh, everybody, look, there's 50 necklaces for our show. It's going to be like, hey, if you want a custom order, I'll do it. But you're going to have to give me it some time right. because right. I'm going to do it when I feel like doing it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then once you get past that, get back on it. Right. It's it, It'll never be like it was for plugs for us. You know what I mean? I was literally... 12 hours a day making plugs. I'm not doing that. No right. way. I'm not doing right. that. Right. Right. 
So it's, it's kind of the way I'm doing also. the pop sockets right now. Sue Holtz is, is my, I think she has supported our charity for the last <laughs> I year. I love because Sue Holtz. Right. She yes, goes through right. pop sockets like crazy. I think she owns 25 or 30 of them now. Right. And she's like the other day, she says, Dave, I broke this one. I need it. I have to have something on my phone, you know, and it's like, okay, what do you want? And right. uh, so I go looking for material for her. So I like that idea, Ryan. Yeah. Oh, Courtney, I'm glad you're okay. I got a, I got a box from you yesterday and i was going through and i know you love to lick rocks and i pulled a piece of bumblebee jasper out of that box i would never lick bumblebee me out well who would have known that you would have known that it was bumblebee you know what i mean <laughs> i'm just kidding it's i'm yellow. just kidding i got it and i was like yo don't lick this <laughs> there's a reason it was in your box because i won't cut it <laughs> i'll cut malachite now we never had a piece but it's I the first piece bumblebee. i've ever even had in person nice yeah nice yep are you gonna cut it up? are you no. gonna cut it or are you gonna Hell sell no. it okay no, i'm just gonna sell it. i'm just asking because yeah i won't cut it i won't no, it got it. here i don't even and remember I how it i, I do remember in how or who stuff. i got it from it it was probably a giveaway or or because i never would have bought it you know what i mean I, yeah. there's right. just certain things that no i don't play with no. arsenic man there there's very one. very few but there are a couple like I'll cut cinnabar all day long. I yeah, got no problem me. with cinnabar. Yep. Right. As long as it's um, not hot, cinnabar is safe. Exactly. I got no oh. issue. But some people are like, oh my god, don't. No, like it's fine. Well, and the whole um, thing with cinnabar is lots of water on your wheel keeps right. it cool. Mercury right. is vapor harmful when it gets hot. As long when as you're keeping hot, it cool, it's fine. That's right. That's now, right. if you're using right. Nova wheels, people, you have to put extra amount of extra water, water on, on if you use yes. cinnabar. You have they to get put hot. extra water on. They do get hot. Yep. Yeah. They'll burn your fingers. Yeah, I mean, I've oh, got, I, yeah. I've always got my knuckle is pink so and shiny because that's how right. my life is. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, and speaking of cabbing wheels, I was just looking, and Rock and Wheeler was talking about that that they bought a new six inch cabbing machine, uh -huh. and that brings up a really good question, and and this is one I'm going to put to all three of you: six inch or eight inch, and why? Six. six. inch. I get, I can get tighter concaves with a six exactly. inch than I can on an eight. Okay. It rotates faster, so your wheels don't last as long, but your material cuts quicker. Yep. Cab, you make cabs faster. I have yep. I okay. have the CB8, and my very last wheel is an eight inch, because it's my polishing wheel. I just want it to last longer. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it, I absolutely hate how slow it is. It takes. It takes me longer to polish on that than pretty much anything on my hmm. cab machine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it just doesn't I mean, go as fast. The benefit to an eight inch is you have more room in between your wheels. And right? I have these, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't I have mean, little Ryan, hands. Look, Ryan's got big hands. I've got big hands. Yeah. You know, so none of us are. But I would still go with the six inch all day long. You run um, eight inch wheels, Dave? I do. Yeah, I run the I run the easy cab, the eight inch. And, right. and one of the things now, since these are, are kind of a uh, almost a custom build, what I like about it the most is how, all the space between the wheels. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't grind so much of my hand off on the wheel next to me while I'm trying to use the wheel in front of me, like trying to get around a little bit of a curve or something. And you, and you come around on it like that. There's no wheel there in front of my knuckle. You want to know what's funny? The only reason that my knuckle is polished, it's on my right hand, not my left. I never hit my left hand on anything. I don't either. Right. Yep. It's because of that eight inch wheel. So I'm on the in between at the end, I move and that Nova wheel burns the crap out oh, of Oh, they head. are hot. But, but you also have to be careful. So my husband was putting um, the new cab machine together for me the other day, and uh, he didn't put the wheels on the right direction, if that makes sense, right? Some of them are directional wheels. Well, it's not yes. that the wheel's directional, because the wheel itself is not directional. But if you don't the put them on insert. the right way, the, exactly, the insert, and you'll insert, end up with, right. with a... You yeah. know, so you've got to make sure you put them on the right way so you get as much space in between as right. possible. And then, you know, what size spacers are you using between them, too? Like, I can put a one-inch spacer in between all of my wheels and still have room to clamp it down. Yep. Um, Ours are completely even. But, I mean, not, like Ryan, what Ryan did is he got an eight-inch cab machine and put six-inch wheels on it. So he's got a ton really? of room between wheels. Because you can do oh, that, too. The shafts are the same size. Well, like and I've got three inch different. between mine. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah, but on your easy, I don't know about your easy cab. Are the right. nozzles adjustable to be able for the water to hit a six inch wheel? Because on right. the CB8, mine is. Right. I've right, got right. multiple plugs on the front of these that you can do, so you can put your your, oh, uh, so you your can. water wherever you, you wherever want. Wherever yeah. You want. So I can right. do That's that. Good. Um, and, uh, so now one of the things I just want to back up just a little bit, if you take your wheels off of your machine and you've been using them, make sure you put them back on the same direction. Yeah. These are foam centered wheels. Yeah. And so when you're, when they're wet and you're spinning them, that, that pattern forms inside that foam to the wheel. And that's what I meant by making sure you put them on yeah. the right direction. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, so and do you guys the, take time to spin all your water out after you use it every time? I don't either. No, yeah. but every time that I'm done using, this is one thing that really helped that we just learned. Every time, in because we're freehand polishers, I don't dop rarely. You know what? I, if I got to do like a perfect oval that somebody asked me to make, I'll dop. You know, but normally I just do it with my finger. Um, if, in between grits if you have a little spray bottle and you spray your cab off you will never have a micro scratch anywhere from like grit dragging you know what i mean because mm -hmm. even on right. a nova wheel i don't know if you've seen it to where you look down and on the 280 you'll actually have some black yeah. mixed in it's from it's especially the diamond it's from a, that yeah, wheel especially if yeah. it's a newer wheel it's well, and one wheel, of the things i like that for sure and then when you're done too when you're done cabbing yeah. I have a toothbrush. Oh, there's an I, idea. I run across my wheels to get any anything that might be left on those wheels, so I clean yeah, my wheels off. Use a little off. sponge. Yeah. Yep. Same. Yep. See, and I have this fresh yep. water bucket sitting here, so when I go from one wheel to the other, I just reach up in there and I just I take the top of my my fingers and run it across down same in that thing. fresh water, yeah. wash it off. Yeah. Just, just rinsing same your thing. cab yeah. off in just between your wheels. Cab. Yeah. Yeah, makes a difference. Right. So really Matt, does. what what do you use, Matt? Six inch. Yeah. What kind? Speed Demon. It's an old Speed Demon. Okay. My, my okay. wheels were built uh, mid seventies. Wow. Yep. Okay. Nice. Now, do you have the drum style where you got to put belts on there on no. each wheel? No. no? I've got foam wheels. Yeah. No, because I oh, sent that's him. good. I've yeah, got I sent him my wheels wheels and, then, and then foam wheels. Yep. Oh, you sent you sent him. Yeah, you're spoiled yeah. now. That's You'll never I want could, a different type of wheel ever again. Spend, remember when you asked me if I had any extras? Like I had oh, already sent oh, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah guys, <laughs> if you have a cab machine and you haven't tried Nova wheels yet, guys, I'll give it to Diamond Pacific. They Diamond Pacific Novas, Nova not Johnson Brothers Supernovas, because they no, I have, no. I have the Diamond Pacific Nova here. I have the 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 Johnson Brothers Supernova here. And honestly, for, for a ninety dollar wheel and that shipped, they actually do a good job, right? Should, yeah. Yeah. Um, the Diamond Pacific Novas are more than double that, and I don't know what the lifespan for me is going to be yet. But I'm telling you, there is a major difference between the two that I enjoy. This right here, yes, it does a lot of cutting. It's a great wheel. I've I've done a lot of cabs on Johnson Brothers wheels, but when when I go from this one to this one. It's like the, the smoothness, not the bounce in the wheel, but how smooth the surface of the wheel is compared to the Diamond Pacific Novas. This is a completely different feel. It's almost like having felt on your wheel compared to having gravel on your wheel. I like wheel. the felt feeling, dude. Right. That grab right. you get yeah. when I love right. the grab. Um, but I will tell you, if you're going from diamond encrusted resin wheels, just normal wheels, over to these um you're talking at least three times more use yeah they're they're, getting, they're yeah. way they're more they're definitely they're more aggressive. expensive but they'll last they yeah. last a long and I'll time i'll tell you i never had a wheel get scratches out like that yeah ever they're, yeah. they're fantastic oh they are aggressive wheels. yes okay absolutely. so i don't want to cut anybody off but we are getting to 10 o'clock right yeah oh no uh, yeah it's time matt um, hasn't talked yet uh matt's tired you want to say anything? Matt? I'm talking on YouTube right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's been he's been commenting, um, but I want to do the giveaway real quick, and then we'll do our little closeouts. Um, is what we're going to do this for four weeks. We got plenty to talk about for four weeks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Number between one and nine, please, Matt. Mm, good old seven. Seven. 
One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Tammy. Tammy. Yeah. Tammy. Yeah. Tammy won the giveaway. Very surprise, nice, surprise. Tammy. Yep. All right. So I will get this stuff out to you. But Jaws, um, I some people like the centered. The cent I'm not a big centered fan. I love mine. I, I don't like this. I I I have. A oh my god! Fear I got two. Because two centered, I just two think they're too heavy. I just think they're too heavy. Uh, DP I Galaxy wheels. That's what I use. Yep. Galaxy and Novus. That's it. So, I'm telling you guys. Congratulations, Tammy. I already have your information, so you don't need to email me. So we're good there. The weight um, is my problem with them too, Dave. Just yeah, exactly. Know. Yep. It throws too. the balance of my machine off. I don't like it. Yep. Well, okay. you got to buy a good machine. Well, <laughs> it probably wouldn't throw the balance of my machine <laughs> off now, but when I had my cab, I had those when I had my cab king. I didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. But now with the CB8, I bet I could run them easy. You probably could. They're they're they're, they're, welcome, they're actually Sammy. built for it. You're very welcome. All right, guys. Um. I wish I could jump out and one of you guys could close it out because I would let you stay on, but I gotta go. We don't um, know how. <laughs> I that's what I'm saying. Like I, there's just no way to do that, unfortunately. So sorry, you're gonna have to wait till next week to finish this conversation. I'll get that so video made. Okay, we got plenty of stuff made. to talk about next week. So two Ryan things next will, week. Right. Let's talk about Jaws with his centered wheels. Let's get back to chaos with using the Dremel to do cabbing next week. Uh, yeah, my, my thing covers the Dremel and Jaws. Is He wanted me to make a whole drilling video. Yeah, a, dr oh. a whole drilling video. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I started with the Dremel. That's how I started cabbing was yeah. with the Dremel until for about a year and a half until I got my cab machine. Yeah, let's remember so, to talk about those next week. Um, okay. Nice. Uh, make yourself a list, Dave. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Brian, you want me to say anything? I'm just happy to be back. Yes. I'm just happy to be back. Yes. Miss you All guys. Right. Thank you very um, much. I'm so glad that you made it. Thank you for coming. Too. Even though you were late, we certainly appreciate and love seeing you. And uh, I'm going to, well, yeah, I'm sorry. I did it. So I got to take you off first. So bye, bye, I love bye, bye, you. Bye, bye. I love See you. you later. Matt. Now I'm talk. Glad be back. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. She said talk. <laughs> you're always so quiet i feel like we're always just kind of you know because we all will just blah, 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 you know oh yeah yeah now it's good to be back good to see everybody going again and uh good to get into some conversation about some rocks yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely all right looking forward to seeing you next week sir absolutely thank you thank you good to see you Matt. later Dave. Hey, I missed everybody. I'm glad to be back. And I have to brag because I want everybody to know I'm the only person on the face of the earth that has a 24 by 36 Rock Talk Lapidary poster. Only because he's not trying to share the information like he said he would. <laughs> hey, Bye, if anybody Dave. wants one, I can tell you how to get them. All right. That's Bye -bye, what everybody. you said three days ago. Well, I haven't talked to you in three days. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Dave. See you later. All right. <laughs> Bye. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. We love you so much. Uh, just really appreciate you. If you haven't already hit that bell and liked it and loved it and shared it and all that other kind of good stuff, we would certainly appreciate it if you would do that. And uh, we will see you next week. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting a whole bunch of stuff, but you know how that works. So I forget stuff every week, and that probably isn't going to change. So again... Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Take care. Great show, guys. Great show, guys. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you next Thursday at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time.